What's going on guys, Teddy Baldessar here, back with another reaction video. So we looked at commercials from bad watch brands, we looked at watches on QVC, now let's go for the mainstream brands. Most of the brands that I talked about on a day-to-day -day basis, real watchmakers, and looking at some of their ads. Sometimes a lot of these brands are kind of notorious for perhaps not having the best advertising, especially digitally, but wanted to kind of just go through some of them. Some of them are old, some of them are new, and just getting some general uh, just thoughts about them. I have actually not seen the majority of these. I've kind of compiled some and I chose not to look at them, just go through them together with all of you. So let's get started. But in addition, guys, before we jump in here, sorry for the pump fake there, do have a blog looking at 35 of the best watch brands. Say you want like a cliff notes of the industry, where to start, maybe you're new to watches, I definitely check that out. We'll be in the description down below. But first we have really uh, probably one of the leading brands, maybe the leading brand when people think of watchmaking, Patek Philippe. So let's check out this ad. I already feel poor. feeling like a, literally like a peasant right now, but all right, let's continue. I mean, it, it's a good, I, I love that phrase. It's, it's very memeable. I feel like a lot of people have just made a meme about that whole saying of you don't actually own a Patek Philippe. You don't just merely look after it for the next generation. There's some funny memes out there about that. Just, you know, I throw them on screen or something like that, but it's a good ad. It's a, that's just a great way of just remembering the brand. And it's pretty true. I mean, these, these watches certainly outlast any living individual. Uh, Patek Philippe is the pinnacle in terms of watchmaking, I believe, when you're talking about it from a more mainstream perspective of luxury. Sure, production level is still very low, but from a mass market point of view, I think many people are familiar with Patek Philippe, kind of that step of, kind of the Rolex of high horology. Honestly, that's really what they are. All right, now let's continue here. So we look at Patek Philippe. I think we're familiar with that ad. Now, this is another ad. I've actually seen this one, I lied. So I thought it'd be funny just to kind of show the contrast here of two different brands. I am Edouard Melon, CEO of H. Moser et Company. I'm here looking for a campaign for our new Pioneer watch collection. So I'm meeting a top-notch pair. The Pioneer is a killer watch. I did a review of the their Turbion, the Pioneer Turbion. If you want to know just a little bit more about that piece as well as just how a Turbion works, I can link to it down in the description below, but let's continue. Asian agents. Well, let's see let's what see they've what got. Edouard. The guy explains what he's come up with. He seems very excited. His idea is that you don't buy a Pioneer for yourself. You buy it for your son. He talks about a man who's worked hard, succeeding through his own blood, sweat and tears, who decides to leave his most treasured possession, his pioneer, to his son. Wait a minute. Pass on my watch to my son, Tom? No, he's not getting my pioneer. Come on guys, such a cliché. I really like that ad. Partly why is just because Moser is like just a brand. I mean, they're serious watchmaker, absolutely serious watchmaker. They do a lot of just uh, OEM work for other manufacturers as well. And the collaboration they recently did with MBNF, killer watch. Uh, but the thing with them is I just love how they have a sense of humor. I don't know if you guys have ever seen their like Apple Watch concept. It's basically just like an Apple Watch tourbillon ridiculous, like $200,000. So I just love when a brand can have a sense of humor, especially at that level of watchmaking. So I applaud Moser completely and also throw in a little bit of shade at Patek Philippe, which is pretty cool and badass. Okay, so now I, I kind of mentioned, I think in the title here, we're talking about luxury watch brands, but I figured it'd be good just to throw in some other brands as well. So next up we have Timex. Got an old school ad here.
<laughs> Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. So that's just, that was just pretty clever, honestly. And Timex, you know, the, you know the old saying, you know, keeps on ticking and take a licking overall idea. And I think that's just a clever way of doing it. I'm just perplexed why like a brand like Timex, like back in the 1980s, it looks like when this was coming out and just for many watch brands, like the pushing of creativity in the marketplace, pushing their products out. Watches nowadays, of course, very different, but you see the success of these other brands and just the very just copy cookie cutter type of marketing that's going out there. And these brands clearly have a creative bone in their body. I just always ask like, you know, why, why doesn't this happen? And also just this level of pretentiousness that always just casting over the entire industry at times. I think it's good when we can see brands just kind of not take themselves so seriously. I know Timex as an example compared to a Patek Philippe, very different. But uh, when you see this, you see the Moser, I think that's just, I think it's good to kind of balance that out sometimes. And I think Brands just need to be a little bit more human at times and not feel like they have to always have this luxury persona because it could just really come off very pompous and I think push away buyers. So that was a clever one, I like that one. All right, so next up we have Breitling. So let's take a look at this ad. Is happening right now. I'm so confused. <laughs> Brightling instruments for professionals. I don't know what the hell I just watched. Um, I don't know what the point of that ad was, but that was kind of weird. But I, 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 don't, I don't know what Breitling is thinking there, but whatever. All right, so the next ad we have here is actually, it's not just an ad. It's actually the first TV commercial that was ever aired by both of us. Let's take a look at what it was. 1941, this one aired. America runs on Bull of a time. That was it. Damn, that's crazy to see how far those things have come. I, I believe that was the first television ad ever created. Uh, the only reason why I know that is I, I would study communication in school. I remember we would like look back at traditional advertising, and I remember seeing that ad and just being like, "What the heck?" You have this like shaky footage, and that's really it. So, wow. Well, there you go. First television ad ever. Aren't you? Don't you want to buy a bullet watch now? Do you? I mean, they did a pretty good job, huh? Okay, IWC. Let's see what IWC's got going on. How often I will have to service this watch? Well, if you mean update, normally every two to three weeks. But with this one, it's very simple. All you have to. So this is Kurt Claus. He created IWC's perpetual calendar watch and is a master watchmaker for IWC. Worked there for many years. Uh, so just a little added context here. Do so you take the smartwatch, you put it in a dock, you synchronize it with your personal profile, then a short wait of approximately 45 minutes, and you're almost done. All you need to re enter your cloud user information, and that's it. It's 18 updates a year in total, but this little baby right here already runs on service 431C, which means only 17 more updates to go. 17 updates a year? Yeah, 17, 18, and it's super light. So if you want to go jogging, this watch, you don't even feel it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That was a nice play at the Apple Watch. I mean, the Apple Watch, it's kind of weird because this is like this elephant in the room for the entire industry, like just Apple coming on the scene, completely just outselling the entire Swiss industry. And it seems like they're just, just avoiding ever even addressing it, the fact that this is happening. You see a lot of the brands just going up market, but funny way to kind of get at the perpetual, the fact that this is literally, if you keep it running, to no updates until the year 20, I can't even say that, 2,499. I mean, think about that, that's crazy. So nice job at IWC, I think that was a cool tie-in. And I think brands, again, just like 
just don't take yourself so seriously. Have some fun. You know, it's watches at the end of the day. You're selling a product at the end of the day, and I think that's really important. Uh, so I think just want to see more from this from many brands out there. All right, now we have Rolex. We got the crown themselves. Let's see what we got. This is basically just like a big just middle finger to everybody that wants this watch because you know you can't get it. They just, they just have like a subtext that comes under there and somebody like whispers, you can't have it. But yeah, Daytona, I mean, do they even need a mark? I mean, what's, this was just a waste of an ad to be honest. I mean, what's the wait list on these things? I mean, do you really need help selling these things anymore, Rolex? But. I mean, just gonna, this is just a giant tease. That's what this is. Nobody likes a tease, Rolex. Stop doing this to us. All right, so now I have one final ad to look at. I've never seen this one, but somebody said that they think I'll find it funny. So let, let's give it a shot. This is my watch. A timekeeper, like many others, worn for years. Time has left its marks. Yet the dramatic light concept makes it look so stunning. And the mysterious clicky sounds attract your attention. Emotional music to make you feel like there's something meaningful about it. <laughs> to elicit that sense of longing about something you weren't even interested in a minute ago. Rapid light changes, camera motion, to make it appear as though something important is happening now. <laughs> this is so true. Revealing the brand and using a rich voice to communicate the message. Now, the slow motion climax to make it feel even more powerful and relevant. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. Telling that story about an insignificant object in a cinematic way. Eye candy. It's enjoyable and it leaves you with a question. What can we do for your product? Go to that website now. That was pretty brilliant. Got to be honest with them. It seems like this might be a marketing agency that's trying to just create the stereotypical watch ad, which honestly they nailed it. Most watch ads I see are kind of like this. They got the cinematic, really dark shadow reveal shots. Uh, so they definitely hit that out of the park. That's pretty funny. So I hope they were able to get some business from this. Honestly, if any, any watch brands watching, hit, hit these guys up. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So, all right guys, well that is looking at some different watch brands, the different ads that they have. And honestly, I think a lot of times we always just see that, or think maybe, that a lot of these brands maybe don't have the chops in terms of marketing and advertising. I think it's more of just a byproduct of not being maybe where some of the future consumers are, because uh, they clearly have some creative ads. And I think for the most part that just having some humor in it, I think goes a long way in this industry that is just, oh my gosh, so over the top serious all the time. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Hope you did enjoy it. In addition, head over to teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, one of the most trusted places to buy a watch online. In addition, definitely check out the blogs, helpful blogs down below if you are new, new to watches or just maybe wanna look at some new watches to perhaps add to your wish list. have some really helpful places to go down below. Also follow us on Instagram, stay up to date with the content, see some cool photos of watches. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.